What is going on everybody, Zionic here, and in today's video we are going to be seeing, man, probably the one Pokemon that probably none of you guys have, but this battler happens to have it, and the only way really to get these candies is from hatching those 7 kilometer eggs, and that is going to be a level 50 Galarian Stunfisk. This is from Jay Angles as well, who you guys saw earlier on the channel, who reached number or rank 1 in the world with that triple weather ball team um, last week. Now today we're going to be seeing his team with Dragonite, Galarian, Stunfisk, and Empoleon. That Empoleon on the safe swap is very, very nice, especially with Drill Peck to handle those fighters. So let me know what you guys think about this team. Let's all watch Galarian, Stunfisk, as I myself won't have it for a long time. Um, and probably the same uh, situation with most of you. Let's go ahead and get right into these battles. I will say if you don't have Galarian, Stunfisk, Excadrill could be a nice substitute. It's just definitely not as bulky. All right, Clefable on the lead. Let's see if he can win this battle right here he's probably going to instantly swap into that empoleon which he does we do see the clefable decide to stay in which is pretty interesting and now it's going to be an empoleon mirror fight right here so in this mirror match you definitely want to be going for hydro cannons both drill peck and hydro cannon are resisted because of the water steel typing but Hydro Cannon um, has that same type attack bonus. So he has a great opportunity right here to flip this matchup. Because it's a mirror and because he's ahead on energy, he can probably win this matchup right here. He does get a shield from the Empoleon, which is nice. He's probably going to shield himself. He needs to flip this, right? You don't want to have Clefable against Dragonite. And there's no way he can come in and farm enough energy to threaten that Clefable on the back end with his own Dragonite. He actually decided not to shield right there. Wow, very risky. He's going to go ahead and shield this one. We'll have to see what happens here. Hydro Cannon does come through and blocks it. Going to go for his own Hydro Cannon. This is going to be taken out Empoleon or get a second shield. Let's see what happens. Gets the second shield. So going into keeping or losing switch advantage, but getting a second shield is pretty nice. Probably going to come back in with the Dragonite. And Galarian Stunfisk with a shield and a shieldless opponent might be very deadly. We do see the Clefable come back in. An instant swap into Venusaur. So this is where Earthquake does so well. Um, you guys could do a similar thing here um, with Excadrill if you're running that instead. Um, Frenzy Plant doesn't do too much. The thing is with Excadrill is you have to shield those Frenzy Plants. But you can get to multiple drill runs as well. Um, so this Earthquake is going to do a lot of neutral damage. And then hopefully, I don't know if he needs to go for a Rock. So he might have to go for an Earthquake right here. We'll have to see. Okay, Charge Moon now coming through. He's probably going to shield right here. And he may, Rock Slide might be enough. It's definitely enough in Great League, but I don't know about Ultra League. He's going to go ahead and go for the Earthquake, the guaranteed KO. Um, he knows he needs to land this. And then probably trying to get to an Earthquake versus the Clefable because Mudshot is such a great fast move right here. So let's see what happens. Yeah, he should be able to get to the Earthquake in time. Wow. That's, oh no, Charge Move coming through. This is dangerous. This is probably that Meteor Mash. Is it going to be enough? It's barely not enough right there, able to get to the Earthquake. This is going to be, I don't know if it's going to be enough to take it out. I've never seen Galarian Stunfisk here in Ultra League. No, it's not enough to take it out, but Dragonite here with Dragon Claw um, should do enough damage, even though it is resisted because of that Fairy Typing. It's very, very low, um, so that's probably going to be a good battle. So uh, Galarian Stunfisk closing that end game. Um, so either want to win the switch or get both shields from the opponent. That's a great call right there. All right, moving into game two. Let's see how this one goes. We have Dragonite on the lead versus Venusaur. Okay, very positive um, lead win right here. We do see a swap now into Charizard, so the Empoleon is going to come out. What's great about Waterfall here on Empoleon is it absolutely chunks Charizards, and as long as you safely shield right here, which he does, and is going to be the Blast Burn, so that's a great shield right there. They can commit to that farm down, and now he has Drill Peck for the Venusaur that is probably going to be coming back in. We don't know what's in the back. It might be another Fire, um, but we'll have to see. So we do see Venusaur come back in. So we're going to see this double drill peck right here. It does super effective damage because of that grass typing, right? But it's not going to one shot. But still, Venusaur cannot tank a bunch of these drill pecks. The first one comes through. As you can see, it's going to have to start shielding now, which is great with an Empoleon farm down. By giving up one shield, you maintain the switch advantage and you get the energy needed to get shield advantage back while also maintaining switch advantage. Now, this Venusaur also has to throw energy too. And rightfully so, because Empoleon was just about to get to another drill peck. So Empoleon will go down. And we're going to see that char or the uh, Dragonite now come back in. Probably look to commit to the hard farm right here. And it all depends on what's in the back. It's going to be a Clefable. Here comes the uh, Galarian Stunfisk. And that is going to be a good game. And the opponent knows it. Good battle right man. Galarian Stunfisk locking down those fairies. All right. Moving into this next one. 
We have Dragonite on the lead versus Charizard. Okay, another lead win. That's what's great about Charizard here is it can beat all of those. Uh, oh, this is actually a Dragon Breath Charizard, which is definitely dangerous and a fantastic swap here into Empoleon. Now, that's the one starter that could really pressure. Um, Charizard is a Dragon Breath Charizard. We do see him a champ now come in, so he's going to hopefully get to that drill peck in time. He has to let this go. This is definitely dangerous because Machamp right here is in the same situation. Oh, wow, that did a lot. Can't get to the Drill Peck either. Machamp is one of those Pokemon that's super dangerous on the hard farm of a Steel because Dragonite's going to be so weak to Rock Slide um, that it can really threaten right here. Now, Dragon Claw is not going to do enough damage to take out the Machamp, and I think the opponent knows it and definitely doesn't have to shield because all they need to do is get to that Rock Slide, and this is going to be threatening that shield here from Dragonite. Will we see a shield? We do see a shield right here. It's going to be a Cross Chop Shield Bait, which is unfortunate. Um, they could have let that go and survive, but man, that's so risky. We do see the Charizard come back in with Dragon Breath. I'm going to go ahead and swap in a Galarian Stunfisk, and there's a Venusaur in the back. Um, so this Venusaur... The Frenzy Plants still do a lot of damage, but Galarian Stunfisk is an absolute tank right here. Frenzy Plant does come through. Does a decent amount, but he's going to have to get some Shield Baits right here. But he's going to go straight for the Earthquake. Maybe the opponent is unaware how much damage Earthquake can do. And they may think it's a Rock Slide. They do Shield, though, so that's a great Shield by the opponent right there. Now they're both in a one Shield situation, but Venusaur is technically a head on energy when it comes to this because of how quick it can get to that Frenzy Plant. So we do see a Shield there by Galarian Sunfisk. He may have to do a Sack Swap here as well, hoping to catch the Frenzy Plant on um, the, uh, the Dragonite. We do see a second shield. Oh, this is so dangerous. He's going to have to sack swap. No, he can't get it in time. Venusaur is going to be able to take out the Galarian Stunfisk right here. And then Dragonite can come back in, but Charizard already has some loaded energy. And that is going to be a good battle. I'm going to throw the last Dragon Claw right here. It's not going to be enough to take out Charizard, but... Well played to the opponent, and that's what's great. When it comes to the starters, Dragonite can beat all of the starters except for that Dragon Breath Charizard, um, which I used in a previous video. It's really, really nice. All right. Moving into this next battle, we have another Charizard on the lead. See if this is Dragon Breath or Fire Spin or Wing Attack. It's going to be Fire Spin. So this is definitely a much better matchup here um, for Dragonite. And all again, all depends on that fast move. They're going to go ahead and let this Dragon Claw go through. It does do super effective damage, um, but it can tank it. And we do see a swap now into Gallade, a Shadow Gallade at that. So they're going to go ahead and go um, for Dragon Claw right here. It's going to do quite a bit of damage because this is Shadow as well. So we do see a shield and we're going to see a swap right away into Galarian Stunfisk right here. Um, which it's got to watch out for that close combat. Close, even Leaf Blade will do a lot of damage. We'll have to see. Going to go ahead and let it go. It's just a Leaf Blade. Oh, that's a dangerous game to play. Another charge move coming through. I wasn't counting the confusions. It could be close combat, but I'm guessing, yeah, it's just a back-to-back -back Leaf Blade. Um, so let's see. Oh my gosh. Shadow Gallade is so deadly, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and go for the Earthquake. Rock Slide would be resisted because of the fighting typing there. So this Earthquake is going to have to land, and it does. That's great. We'll probably see the Charizard come back in and farm down. Let's see what happens. All depends on what's in the back, too. Oh, man. Okay using the full timer right here or a bunch of a bunch of lag wow that is unfortunate swampert has an unknown amount of energy right here that is really unfortunate they just stood there with galarian stunfisk who had like at least 20 health or more and swampert just farmed it down and didn't even know man that's that's what's 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 uh, tough here with the uh, the niantic servers is stuff like that all right so it's up to empoleon right here empoleon's actually set up pretty well um it just has to watch out for a blast burn from charizard and earthquake from swampert um, earthquake could do that super effective damage definitely gonna have to shield and then we may see a swap out into charizard let's see no deciding to stay in gonna go ahead and throw the hydro cannon right away good call because you have no clue how much energy the swampert has right here and it all depends on how much yeah they let it go okay so now it's charizard this is actually pretty good right here because um, considering they threw a Dragon Claw, they can just completely farm down and that is going to be a good battle. Very well played. All right. That was unfortunate in the mid game right there. Just getting completely farmed down by something that it does really well with energy. All right. We have Dragonite versus Obstagoon now on the lead. Kind of a neutral matchup right here, but they do decide to swap out into Clefable. Uh, or not Clefable, Togekiss, um, which Empoleon now can handle pretty, pretty well. It has to watch out um, for the Flamethrower, but going for the Hydro Cannon right away to pressure the, the shields right here on the Togekiss. No shield, though, which means they can completely farm down. They won't be able to get to the Flamethrower in time, which is pretty good, considering they might have to shield that Flamethrower. 
Now we will see the Obstagoon likely come back in and commit to that hard farm to throw some energy back on the Dragonite, but let's see what happens. Able to get to the Hydro Cannon in time. This is going to do a decent amount of neutral damage here to the Obstagoon, um, but probably won't get a shield from it. Yeah, it doesn't get a shield, but chunking that health is very crucial, especially with Waterfall and Hydro Cannon. That's a lot of health, and the energy, I don't know, was worth it because Dragonite can now come in and do a lot of damage with this Dragon Breath. Has to watch out for the gunk shot, but I don't think it built up enough energy. But they are going to go ahead and respect that and shield the Night Slash. And now try to commit to that farm down. We know this is going to be another Night Slash now. That was a bit too quick um, to be able to kick to a Night Slash and a gunk shot. So they're going to go ahead and let that go. We do see a Clefable in the back and Galarian Stunfist come in. What a hard lock. That is awesome. So a lot of teams um, in the Ultra League Premier Cup will be running with Double Charmer. Um, and this team can really handle Double Charmer, right? So Earthquake now coming through. We know this does a lot of damage. They do decide to shield, but that is fine. Um, this seems like a pretty positive matchup. They just got to land one more Earthquake um, and maybe be able to commit to the farm. And they're actually going to let this go as well. It's just a Psychic. It does nothing. Man, an absolute wall. The defense did fall, though, so that is going to add up right here um, because Charms are just going to keep chunking. But Earthquake now coming through. I don't think this is going to be enough to KO, but they might be able to complete. Oh, they have two shields. I'm silly. They have two shields right there, so they have to get to this third Earthquake in time before the Clefable um, can get to that charge move. So we'll have to see if this is going to KO. Doesn't, not even close. We do see the Obstagoon come back in, and Dragonite is going to have to hard farm down. Clefable might have energy as well, enough energy to throw a Meteor Mash, so this is going to be interesting. He's going to have to throw the Hurricane on the Clefable, I think. Ooh, one fast move away. So close able to get to it in time that is a dangerous game to play that clefable was almost at the meteor mash which would have been very very deadly but still a great battle right there all right moving into this next battle let's see how this one goes we have dragonite on the lead versus umbreon xl umbreon at that yeah xl umbreon we do see an instant swap simultaneous instant swap into Slowbro and empoleon what's great here is going to be resisting the charge moves typically ice beam and psychic here on the slow bro while drill peck is going to be doing neutral so it's actually a pretty good matchup um for the empoleon right here confusion as well is going to be resisted right the steel typing so we do see a charge move coming through, no shield. It is going to be that Psychic, which doesn't do too much damage, but still it's adding up. All that resisted damage here from a Slowbro is really starting to add up, but Drill Packs now are coming through. We may see a shield here from the Slowbro. No shield. This Empoleon might be able to farm down. It's going to be very, very close. Yes, able to farm down. That is huge right there. We do see the Umbreon now come back in, can go for the Hydro Cannon. But Umbreon is an absolute tank here in the Ultra League Premier Cup, especially that XL one. And it can just, look at that. That was like nothing. And it can just hard farm down right here. Deciding, it's deciding to throw its energy, which is interesting. I thought for sure they'd hard farm, um, but that's okay. So now we may see Galarian Stunfist come into this Umbreon. Yeah, we do see the Galarian Stunfist come into this Umbreon, start getting a hit on energy. And it can take XL versus XL right here. Oh my goodness. The Pokemon I'll never have. Actually, I'll probably eventually be able to have these, but tell you what, it's going to be in 2022. So we do see an Earthquake now coming through. I don't even think this can near KO. I don't even think this is going to do half. Yeah, it's like 20%. An Earthquake does 20% of Umbreon's health. That's kind of ridiculous. Um, so yeah, they're just going to let these charge moves go through. It's all about what's in the back. It may be a Charmer, but we do see a swap, and it is a Charmer. There's the Clefable right there. So pretty curious. Um, you know, I guess Galarian Stunfist coming in was an okay call, um, but considering that they may have had a Charmer in the back, definitely, definitely a tough one. So now we see the Hurricane come through, and it lands! That is huge! That is absolutely huge right here. Galarian Stunfisk now can basically farm down. It needs to start throwing these charge moves, though. Will we see a shield, though, from this Meteor Mash? No, they're gonna let it go through. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they're just tanking everything. These XO Pokemon are absolutely ridiculous. They're gonna go ahead and not do too much damage with the Rock Slide. They do get a shield, though, because they're gonna rely on this Charm damage. Can he farm down? Oh my gosh, he's risking it right here. An absolute risk. So hopefully he has enough for two Rock Slides. Yeah, he does. This first Rock Slide should be getting the shield from the Umbreon, and the second one, I don't even know if it's gonna be enough to KO. It should. It should. It should. This should be enough to KO. If it doesn't, my goodness. Let's see. I think it KOs. Yeah, it KOs. All right. That's going to be a good battle right there. Still two shield flex, too. Wow. Okay, moving into this next battle. We have Dragonite on the lead versus Umbreon again. Let's see if he plays it different here. He's deciding to stay in it. 
So this battle might have been done later. Um, I didn't put these in like a specific order. But he does decide to swap into Empoleon right here to catch this charge move. So foul play doesn't do too much damage. Going to start getting ahead on energy. And they're not swapping out. Maybe double Charmer again in the back. It's a common team that I've seen myself. Maybe you guys have seen as well. But it's XL Umbreon with XL Charmers in the back or XL Fairies. Which is just kind of ridiculous. I'm so jealous of everyone who has those. <laughs> Alright, Hydro Cannon now coming through. This is going to do quite a bit of neutral damage. Well, who am I kidding? That does like a fifth. That does like 20% neutral damage. Um, but will we see any shields? I don't imagine. I think he's going to save the shields for the Galarian Stunfist. Considering that they're not swapping out. Which might mean there is Charmers in the back. So we may see Dragonite now come back in. Which we do. And probably a hard farm as well. They definitely want to get a hurricane off on the charmers that are potentially in the back. So they're going to go ahead and let these foul plays go through. Commit to that hard farm right here. Yeah, the hard farm. Throwing the dragon claw actually um, before the Umbreon can get to another charge move. So they will um, be somewhat close to a hurricane, but not. Okay, it's going to be a bomb snow in the back. So we do see an instant swap. Oh, it's Gengar and a bomb snow. Not even close to double charmers right there. Um, but Rock Slides are still going to do a lot of damage. Gengar is deadly too. Has to watch out for Shadow Ball, but we'll see. It's gonna, it is going to be a Shadow Ball, but it can tank, it can tank it like a boss. That did like 40, 50 percent, and Shadow Claws aren't doing too much. So this Galarian Stunfisk is chilling right now, absolutely chilling. Gonna go ahead and throw another Rock Slide. We may see a shield here from Gengar, considering I think he can get to a Shadow Punch in time to pressure a shield. We do see it. So they're going to be able to get to the Shadow Punch right here, and we may see a shield. Yeah, okay, so there's Dragonite versus Abomasuno in the back. One shield to one shield. This is going to be dangerous. He's going to have to commit to that farm down. Has to get off the rock side right here to pressure that shield from Abomasuno because it will be doing super effective damage, and hopefully they get a shield so he can throw the Hurricane. Let's see what happens. No shield. That is dangerous. Can he get to another rock side in time? He can. Okay, this rock side, if this doesn't get the shield, what the heck? This should get a shield. No, it doesn't. Gonna go ahead and swap now. Oh my goodness, he's gonna have to shield. I don't think Obama Snow has two weather balls. I think it's like two fast moves away. So let's see. Yeah, able to farm down. That is going to be a good battle. Very well played. All right, moving into the next battle. Let's see how many more we got. I think we got two more. So we have Dragonite on the lead versus Excadrill. Okay, definitely a tough matchup. Might have to switch out. Yeah, it's going to go ahead and switch out straight into Empoleon. And Waterfall is absolutely chunking. But going to be throwing a Drill Run right here. That's what's dangerous here about Excadrill. Is drill Run is a very quick charge. We have same energy as Rock Slide. Now we do see an Alolan Muck come in, which is actually pretty nice. Considering Hydro Cannon will do a lot of neutral damage. And they can probably get a shield back as well. Um, after getting quite a bit of energy there on the lead. So they do get a shield. And probably, hopefully, get to another Hydro Cannon. Yeah, they can. But they have to watch out for Dark Pulse. Dark Pulse isn't going to do enough to KO. But it's going to do enough damage where the Alolan Muck might be able to farm down. They get two shields, though. That is absolutely huge right here for them. So they're going to go ahead and let this go through. Now, the Alolan Muck might get very risky right here and try to farm. No, and not even close to farming down. Who am I kidding? It's going to have to throw another charge move right here. I thought Empoleon was a bit lower. Will we see a shield? No. You know what? Probably the right call is not to shield here. Yeah, no shield, and then probably come in with Galarian Stunfisk and farm all the energy in the world. Let's see what happens. I want to see a Dark Pulse land here against Galarian Stunfisk. So Galarian Stunfisk is going to come in, absolutely farm down, probably no shield right here. Again, has to watch out for Drill Run from the extra Drill, probably has to watch out for whatever's in the back, maybe, uh, what could be in the back? Gyarados, maybe? Maybe a Gyarados in the back? Gonna completely hard farm. Will we see a shield? No shield. Gonna keep letting this go. They can already one shot the extra drill, and if there's a Gyarados in the back, they can probably two shot it right there. But they are gonna throw the rock slide now. They don't want to take another dark pulse right here, but they're gonna undercharge it as well. Still does a lot of damage, and we are gonna see a Dragonite in the back. Okay, makes sense. Oh, we see a swap into Excadrill. That is unfortunate. Gonna be catching um, the Earthquake right here to the face, and then they can go into the mirror fight now, and that is going to be a good battle. Very well played. All right, moving into this next one. Let's see how this battle goes. We have Dragonite versus Dragonite. Okay, mono and mono. Let's see how this goes. They're deciding to stay in, both of them. They're going to be getting this Dragon Claw. Who's going to win the CMP tie? Both decide to swap at the same time into Empoleon. Ladies and gentlemen, do we have a mirror fight right here? Oh my goodness. Um, mirror team right here. 
I wonder if they actually, oh wow, the Empoleon got an extra fast move through right there. So that is unfortunate, especially in mirror fights with waterfalls. Um, it's very important to get those fast moves through, but uh, Jangles is able to get it back as well. So let's see what this comes down. It's gonna come to CMP tie right here. Oh man, the other Empoleon was able to get it, but he did sneak through a fast move and I think he can survive the Hydro Cannon and get off his own Hydro Cannon right here. This is gonna be enough to KO considering he snuck through that extra waterfall. I think we may see a shield. No, able to flip it right there, which is huge, which means Galarian Stunfisk now can go into that Dragonite. But it's all about what is in the back. I wonder if there is um, a, uh, if there's a Galarian Stunfisk in the back. Let's see. Dragonite's gonna have to throw a Hurricane right here. Dragon Claw wouldn't do any damage, but Hurricane still might do quite a bit. Let's see. It is gonna be the Hurricane. No, that does nothing. That does absolutely nothing. Absolute tank. We do see a slow bro here in the back. So we're gonna be going for Rock Slide now. Um, this is gonna be chipping away the health, but Dragonite really can't come into this too too quickly because, well, they do get a shield as well. Um, because Confusion just does so much damage. So they're gonna be going for Dragon Claws now. So they're gonna chip away the health on Slowbro, but this Slowbro is an absolute tank. So this might be troublesome here for, for Jangos. They are deciding to throw energy as well. Will we see a shield? Mm, yeah, we do see a shield on the Psychic right there. Hopefully we can get to another Dragon Claw in time. He's gonna have to throw it. These Confusions are really, really adding up. And it's all gonna come down to Galarian Stunfisk with energy management right here. And I think it might be able to commit to the farm down considering that the Dragonite just threw, no, they're gonna throw the energy right away to put pressure here. Dragonite did just throw a hurricane, so I think it's energy dry. So now he needs to get to two rock slides right here. Oh yeah, this is game over. Able to get to one rock slide. This is gonna be getting the final shield here from the Dragonite. And I don't think Dragonite can even get to, yeah, it has to get to two hurricanes basically. And that is going to be a good battle, very well played. And that was the last one right there. So a really great showcase here with Galarian Sunfist. It's a great strategy with the team right leading a Dragonite, having double coverage in the back with that double steel, utilizing the Galarian Stunfisk. Again, if you guys don't have it, like I don't, I'm gonna be trying it with Excadrill so you guys can try that out. And pulling on safe swap is very, very deadly. It's so strong. I've used it in multiple seasons. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think about this team, what you guys think about XL Galarian Stunfisk level 50. And like always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.